Amid efforts to fully reopen the country, President Trump this week vowed to increase pressure on governors to reopen schools, even threatening a cut in funding should they remain closed. So what we want to do is we want to get our schools open. We want to get them open quickly, beautifully in the fall. And uh, the, as you know, uh, this is a disease that's a horrible disease, but young people do extraordinarily well. I sat down with Liberty University President Jerry Falwell Jr., whose successful reopening strategy should serve as a model for other institutions this fall. The president tweeted this morning, in Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and many other countries, schools are open with no problems. Obviously, the president wants to see schools reopen this fall. Um, and Liberty University has created a great model for that and what you have done. What can other schools and, and universities learn uh, from the steps that Liberty has taken? Well, Purdue University is another good example. They've acknowledged that 80% of their university community is has almost a 0% risk of fatality because of their age, 18 to 23. Anybody that has an immune problem or diabetes, we're finding ways to separate faculty and staff from the student population. And that's, it's really as simple as that. I think these elite Ivy League schools that are going all online and just sued the president this morning. It sued him because of the new ICE restrictions to say, if you're only taken online, stay in your own country. They, they feel so strongly that they want those students here, even though they're taken online. I don't know if they want them here so they can tear down more statues or, or what it is, but it's something fishy going on. What are you hearing from students? Are you hearing any reluctance uh, for them to come back to campus in the fall? No, our numbers, I guess, are the same as they were this time last year for the fall. So we expect to be full like we were last year. Our online numbers are through the roof. We're 10,000 past our previous record of 98,000 in, in 2014. And so, you know, Liberty was a pioneer in online education. And so now that COVID has hit, we've picked up a lot more students than we ever had before because they know that we spent 30 years, 30 plus years um, perfecting the product and perfecting online education. So. If they're a little bit scared of COVID, we're their first choice. I love that. Well, I know that you've uh, surpassed 100,000 online students. That's incredible. Um, you know, in the K through 12 space, there's a lot of discussion of maybe doing a hybrid approach. Um, what's your thought in terms of, of you know, the younger generations, younger students um, going back in an online capacity? Well, I think, um, I think, They've made their decision. They're going to be, like I said, our numbers are the same for on, for resident students as they were last year. They want the social interaction. That's the whole, that's one of the big reasons 18 to 23-year-olds go to college is the uh, the sports, the uh, the social interaction. The joke around here is, is that they come to Liberty to to uh, to find a spouse, and I don't know if that's true, but it's all dependent on age. You know, our online population is average age 37, and um, the younger people, they don't want to be sitting at home doing online. They want to be here on campus. It's two totally different demographic groups, and it's uh, and we expect to be full, and we expect to use best practices. We are going to use best practices to keep everybody safe. Well, eager to uh, see the students heading back to school at Liberty and hopefully a lot of these K through 12 schools and other universities as well uh, can learn a lot from what Liberty has done. Jerry Falwell Jr., thank you so much for being with us today. Great to be with you. Thank you.